What is going on, everyone? We are back with another In Search of Darkness. 1980s horror. Reaction. Yeah. Review. Not reaction. I'm Depraved. I'm Hellcat. And together we are... Hella Depraved. It is horror. actually a reaction, though, because we had not seen this previous. Um, yeah, we had not seen, previously seen this, and to be honest, were it not for this thing, probably never would have. I had never heard of it. I had never, so, yeah. I had never heard of it, and as soon as I would have seen... Um, Harvey's name attached to it. Weinstein. I probably would not have yeah. cared to watch it, which is a bummer, because it's actually a really good movie. Yeah. Um. <laughs> which, I mean, like, unfortunately in Although the some industry, of the scenes, come to think of it, some of the scenes make a little more sense. In the industry, you can't exactly avoid his name. Right. All the time, and, but you're not wrong. Like, like I don't know. I probably also would have passed it by based on the uh, bad romance cover of it and the fact that it sounds like it's a complete knockoff but again turned out to be it's actually a, a very movie. a very yeah. intelligent slasher yeah. that is definitely built in the same vein as Friday, Friday the, 13th. the 13th yeah yeah um but is not Friday is, the 13th. is smart right has some interesting moments. Um, it's directed by Tony Malum. Screenplay was written by Bob Weinstein. Weinstein? I think it's Steen. Weinstein? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Peter Lawrence. Uh, story was done by Brad Gray, Tony Malum, and Harvey. Harvey produced it. It's uh, cinematography yeah. was Harvey Harrison. Um, right. Movie is 91 minutes long. Had a budget of 1.5 million but only made a box office of 707,000. That is Oh well, almost 708. I mean like I think the thing is again all of the reasons that we just gave minus uh Harvey being in it at that point um for not watching it, I would guess are the same reasons that you know, they they had Friday the 13th already. You know, and, and that one did exceedingly well, and this just sounds, it sounds like a knockoff. Right. Um, I don't know. Should I give the synopsis while you're... Um, well, what I was looking into, it looks like it might not have... A Rotten Tomato? A Rotten Tomato page. Well, then why didn't you pop up when I clicked in? Hmm. I, I hate... Um, so, the, okay. the Burning apparently has um, 73% by critics off of 11 reviews, 60% um, from the audience, audience score off okay. of 5,000 plus reviews. That makes sense. Makes sense. So, so yeah, go ahead and hit them with the plot, baby. Hit this plot. is, it's kind of, sounds a lot like Friday the 13th. There is a caretaker for a summer camp that is is nasty and hated and some of the boys decide to play a prank on him and it goes wrong and he ends up burning alive and then jumps I mean, into he a lake jumps into a lake and is actually we're thankful that he didn't also drown i know i, I made that comment when it sucked to almost burn alive and then and drown but he is taken to the hospital he does recover so it picks barely up. well barely. Because you do he get li a, he lives. You do get a uh, almost um, a, what are those called? An expo exposition. Yeah, they say that the graphs didn't take and that he'll get over it eventually. And it took five years to even leave the hospital. And you know he goes out covered, and everyone thinks he's a monster. And but it's so it's five years later, and you see that one of the campers that played the prank is now. Uh, one of the counselors. counselors and basically it's about the caretaker returning to the, the summer camp and taking his revenge for the prank gone awry and he is targeting two of the counselors who were two of the boys that played the prank but he also just doesn't care about anybody else who gets in the way right so the kids go off, and they are the older kids, go off on a little Devil's Island overnight stay away from the cabins where they canoe down, and 
he ends up, you know, letting go the canoes and trapping them on the islands and taking out several. It was a little disappointing there, but several. And um, that's pretty much the... So many people die. So many people yeah, die. Yeah, not enough. But, you know, that's that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, there was like 17, 18 fucking deaths. There were a lot of deaths. Really? I felt like there weren't enough. Um, he definitely had more than Pamela did on her first outing. Of her only outing. Yeah, but they were also prepping for the summer camp to, to arrive. This is like, they're already there. And he allows a fair amount to escape on the raft. Just saying. The second one. Because he gets so, like focused on taking out the the perv that he chases him down instead of anyway we'll get there we'll get there so all right uh were you done with the yeah the plot okay so the cast um it looks like brian matthews as todd the counselor leah air a a aries kalish um as michelle brian backer as alfred Lou David is Cropsy. That would be the caretaker. Larry Joshua is Glazer. Jason Alexander yes. as Dave, who's probably the biggest name in this movie. And he was he was one of the campers. It just comic relief like normal. He was But it wasn't there. forced. No, it was some of the best work that I've seen him do. Like seriously watch it just for that. Yeah. He was he came off as very naturally funny. Yeah. As opposed to everything being forced through and, conversation. And I said to you during this that I feel like a lot of comics that happens to them when they're put into sitcoms, they have to come up with so much material all the time that it just starts losing its charm. Whereas this is obviously one of the first movies that he's in and it is just, he's just funny. Right. Yeah. Um, Ned Eisenberg is Eddie. He was nasty. Nasty piece of work. Um, Carrick, most of them were. Carrick Glenn is Sally. Carolyn Hualai is Karen. Um, Fisher, Fisher Stevens. Stevens is Woodstock. <laughs> um, Shelly Bruce is Tiger. Sarah Chudoff, that's a name, as Barbara. Bonnie Dorosky is Marnie. And then Holly, Holly Hunter, Hunter is Sophie, Sophie, which I'm going to leave that off there. Um, there's a few, several other names, but. Right. Um, they are smaller players in it. Um, acting was <laughs> again it was fantastic the, for 80s the, it was a little overdone but honestly this was the acting was fine and we 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 joke about how snuggle struggleish the men in this movie come off as but it's a product of its but time. it's a product of his time the 80s it's especially it, teenage boys. That that was now there. there and was, I'm not saying it's no, it's okay. It's not. There were definitely some but, problems, uh, even ones that were addressed in here, and addressed poorly. Um, not by the females. The females were frank about it being upsetting that this guy scared so and so, or that this guy was a perv and needed to be punished. Because there were a couple guys that were called out in the beginning of this. And um, the male counselor almost kind of treats the situation as boys will be boys. I'll talk to them, doesn't really talk to them. Threatens that, you know, next move they make, they're getting sent home. Doesn't really do it. So, but it was um, honestly kind of how I remember growing up wasn't much different. I mean, maybe slightly, but not not much so anyway um, there are a few things that you're a little uncomfortable with but given the time period you're like honestly that's that's true true to form true to form acting was great um special believable it was believable yeah. acting yeah. um i want to say there were probably only a couple of roles that i was neither here nor there about but uh no, nothing terrible, nothing that right. just seemed out of, entirely out of place. Yeah, no. Honestly, the one thing I will say that seemed out of place with this movie 
is there were way more kids that would normally be considered on the outskirts and nerdy than there were bullies, which is weird to me in a summer camp setting. Every summer camp I've ever been to, it's always been groups of people that are just mean right. to f three or four individual kids. And this kind of seemed at least more balanced or maybe even more on the side of... Ooh, I think I think the big difference that I saw with this is like when you, you see them all at the mess hall. It is a very diverse group of age kids. group. And when I went to camp, it was relegated to like junior high. So uh, for me, that was seventh and eighth graders. I, sometimes sixth grade is added into that. For me, it was not. Um, and then high school and, you know, elementary school was split up in two, I think. Um, but right. like, so to see the counselors taking care of like the whole age range from high school on down, I think maybe that's a little bit of the difference. And then of course the cabins were made up of same age sort of range, but they didn't group them together in like. The, the so, mean group or the popular I, group. I never went to a normal summer camp. And mine were all Christian. All mine were church. Yeah, private. Summer camps. Therefore, having that vast age range was very normal for me. Oh, okay. We had everything from people in second grade up through senior year of high school. Interesting, okay. Um, they had them separated into different sections of the camp. Right. And uh, we actually had lunches at different times okay. based on age range and stuff like that. But in terms of just the actual people and their mentalities, like in this one, you really only had like one guy that was an uber dick, like uber dick. Uber. I mean, like Eddie could kind of be, he was very rapey. But honestly, he was more mischievous with his friends. He wasn't a dick to his friends. He was just beyond the normal bounds of pushy with the right. girl he wanted to fuck and honestly that's all it was it wasn't like a relationship um yeah you're you're right there was only one true douchebag but then again if you think about it honestly they're concentrating more on just two cabins like the cabin of high school boys and right. the cabin of high school girls right and they introduce the rest of the lot as sort of like before they go on the overnight just in the mess hall kind of situation so i don't know i i agree but i disagree i honestly i think for me always thought that there was a, a larger percentage of bullies just because i got the brunt of most of the bullying so i always thought that like camp was just bullies and me you know like that's <laughs> but as a kid your perspective is way different like i I was the kid that ran off and, like, found a cave I, under the roots of a redwood tree just to fucking hide from my entire cabin. I, I was I was definitely the kid that other teens tried to bully, or other kids tried mm -hmm. to bully. But at summer camp, it didn't work on me. Um, in terms of, so they there's this game... There's going to be somebody out there that knows this game at, at summer camps that kids play called the Banana Bandit. And what the Banana Bandit is, is if you're in the middle of a shower, one of the guys will come and swing open the shower curtain. And if you hurry up and turn around, they take a banana and slide it into your ass crack and then run off. Well, that sounds... Um... <clears throat> Fucked up? A little sexualized, too. Yeah, you know. Especially um, for a Christian camp, they're like, no, no, right? no, it's just bullying. No, no, it's practice. But then, no, like, it's don't drop the soap. You had people like me that they'd swing open the shower curtain, and I like, <laughs> and I, I just stood there and looked at them like, what's going on, guys? Right. Mm. And then they'd just be like, oh man, and they'd close the curtain. And walk Honestly, off. as a kid, I had nothing to look at. I was hundred pounds soaking wet. You know, didn't mature until. I mean, like, I got bumps at, like, 16, and then I got 
mountains. Of yowzas or... at 30. So <laughs> I wasn't like... But on the flip side, I, I mean, like, I wasn't the kid that, like, broke down and cried in front of people or right. didn't come back at them. Like, I, I was a pretty nasty kid, and I had to be. But on the flip side, like, I wanted some peace and quiet. So, yeah, I took off. My counselor had to come find me. Um, but this one, I thought, did, did a pretty good job at separation. I thought it did a pretty good job on who ended up dying. Um, so you had a problem with the weapon of choice. No, 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 no. I had a problem with the only weapon used in this movie. I don't care that he used it. Just, it was the only one. It was the only one. I kind of wondered how it never went dull or got stuck in the tree or... Right. Right. Uh, which does bring us, by the way, to the special effects section. Um, honestly, the special effects were done pretty well again... Was this Savini? I think this might have been Savini. I'm positive this was Savini, which um, just makes sense. I'm know. pretty sure he was like a huge uh, name in the credits at the beginning. I believe so. I, I think that they even like made sure that people knew that. Um, special effects were amazing. Um, I don't know. I mean, other than the fact that he uses garden shears because it's a caretaker. Yep, Tom Savini. Yeah, as his weapon of choice and ends up lodging them in trees in, I mean, like he's he's taken out people's throats with it. I just felt like they would have dulled at some point or gotten stuck in the tree or that part wasn't really believable. Um, I, the, the fire scenes were believable. I mean, even the um, post-burned caretaker was mostly believable in terms of, you know, just having a socket for his nose, um, the damage that had supposedly been done and couldn't be grafted over, um, taking out the kids on, on the raft, how all that was done and, and what was left of them, the bloody effects... It was done quite well. Quite well. Movies came out in a weird way in the 80s. Okay. So I'm sitting here reading. It says the film opened May 8th, 1981 in Florida on 110 screens. Okay. Then did a regional rollout following uh, on May 22nd. Right. Um, so basically, oversaturation of slasher films is what like they did a made rollout that like work. waved Most through of the them U.S. Did, though, because horror was looked down upon so much. Like um, now, movies come out everywhere all at yeah. once, every all the time. Yeah, and I don't know. That's weird. Um, uh, all right, babe. Uh, so yeah, special effects pretty solid. A lot of lot of nice stabbings, right? And cuttings and sawings and yeah, it had a pretty decent kill count. Pretty decent. There were account. still a number of the main people left alive at the end, though, which honestly is refreshing for a slasher film that came out in 81. Because by coming out in 81 with a kill count that was high, but not all of the main characters, they were doing something different with the storyline. If it was done now, we'd be like, oh, they're just trying to subvert our expectations whereas in 81 it was more of a new thing because honestly uh not many like what it's only the first friday the 13th and the first halloween i think second halloween had come out at that point so like it it hadn't become like a trope to kill off everybody except for the final girl at that point so I think they they did a really good job. I Oh, what did I decide I was going to use as my icon for this? Oh yeah. What is your judgment, baby Bodors? You said Bodors. Okay. I think I'm going to give this I'm actually going to give this a solid 4 Bodors. For the canoe. That kind of boat or or. Yes. All right. Uh so um I do find this movie to be an absolute joy to watch. It's very campy. Um, going into it, the movie itself subverted my expectations. Right. 
I fully expected this to just be stupid. I, f- I expected a Friday the 13th I, knockoff. Like I the expected... The Wish version. I expected... Yeah. The Wish version of... Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just, just mindless killing, no real plot other than... Right. Guy mad, stab, right. or crazy, the or burning, whatever. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, which, by the way, we thought was going to be an STD because it is summer camp and they were getting it on. Um, still could be, but yeah, it, it was an absolute joy to watch. And one of the things I loved that they did different than anybody else doing slashers at the time was there was no twist. You knew. From the moment the guy started killing people, who it was, there right. wasn't a, a Friday the Thirteenth first person camera. You find out it's his mom, which it was, which is, is fine. It's fun, but if you're gonna do another slasher set in a summer camp, blah blah blah, you you got to keep it new. It it wasn't sleepaway camp where at the very end there's this twist of like, oh, it was actually the sister right. or right. the brother. Portraying to be the, the sister. The only pseudo um, twist is that the the campers, well, counselor, thinks the guy's dead. Right. And you, as the film watcher, know, know that he's, he's not. not. So that's the only. That's why I said pseudo twist. Right. Um, no, so, it was done very very well, and it was intelligent. Not in terms of like a psychological thriller, guys. That's not what we're talking about. There's not all this deep rooted stuff that you need to get out, but there was a lot of interaction there was a lot of running away there was a lot of them coming the campers coming up with solutions to the problem of the canoes coming up with you know so it wasn't stupid mindless stuff you know and and um one of my big complaints i do have with this movie is there's a part it's a specific scene when they make the first draft. Ah, yeah. And the kids go out and they see, after rowing for God knows how fucking long. With oars that are like. With oars that aren't working. Uh-uh. There's two oars that are working because they're actual They could have used oars. their arms better than, yeah, right. okay, anyway. Um, they come across one of the canoes that had disappeared. And as they approach the canoe, the killer jumps out of the canoe, um, which you get the... What I guess would be considered the legendary vision of this movie, which is him lifting the shears up. Well, it's it's the one that's on the movie posters that you saw originally when right. we started this, yeah. As he's about to bring them down on everybody, and you see blood splatter and all right. this other stuff. And, and, you know, he kills everybody on that specific raft trip. Which is fun, yeah. Um, My problem is, realistically, he would have had to have been laying in that canoe for hours just assuming assuming at some point right although someone's gonna show up maybe not because with how slowly that raft was making progress he probably could have been watching and just like launched the canoe out at some point and was like they'll be here in an hour because they're like right across the as somebody who has stood in one place for 45 minutes to scare people my other my other improbability that with that situation is that there was like five people on the raft. <laughs> and granted, he could probably take out the first two before any sort of reaction occurred, just based on surprise and shock. But the other three people, at least one of them is going to start swimming. Right. At right. least one. So, anyway. Well, we know which one wasn't going to start swimming. Well, he wasn't on that raft. Thank God. Which, you know, is just like, that's that's fine. Like, I why, is, why does every camp horror movie have, have that one, one person that, that can't swim that gets pushed into the water? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a bully thing. So, I mean, like, I, don't know. I enjoy a good stabbing, which makes um, the improbability sort of not that's other, a moot point. But uh, Other than that one specific moment of I bought into it. Yeah. pure dumb, the rest of the movie was really fun. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give this 3.5 garden shears. All right. Out of five. So a four and a 3.5. That's not bad. That's not bad. At this point, guys, if she rates something, I'm like always going to be a half step behind. I've learned. Although there was one that you were half half step above. Until you changed yours and then we tied it. Hmm. Right. That was no There's one a lives. couple that we've been 
equal to like right i don't know i do try and give for just like filming or but this one i truly believe deserves a four it, it was, was it was enjoyable i will watch it again it's a lot of fun and it's one i definitely yeah. will probably at some point buy on yeah Voodoo i, I got I into it. the story it wasn't it was fun I love campy too. horror, though. I love... And but by I will say that The literal this wasn't, definition of campy horror. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. that this wasn't terribly, like, cheesy, though. Like, that's not the campy he was talking about. This wasn't, like, one that you're like, I'm, oh, my God, that... that it, you know. I, I also wish that he would have killed people in different ways. I do enjoy I mean, he a garden did. shear or two, but almost everybody was stabbed. Yeah, but in different ways. Some had their throat sliced. Some right. had a stabbing. Some got right. like slashes to the face. Although he does try and take the uh, um, fire thing to the last guy and fails miserably. So maybe he should stick with his garden shears. Right. Anyway. Anyway. I loved it. <laughs> that whole scene of the movie was really weird. It really was. Because... It almost went into, ooh, is he actually being sneaky now? Is he being a sneaky killer? Right. No, no. He no, just... not. He tried. He tried. Pat, pat. No gold stars for you. So. All right, guys. That is going to do it. Join yep. us next time as we cover another werewolf movie. Uh, with that being said. Or don't. Or don't. <laughs> we love you guys. We'll see you next time. <gasps> Bye-bye. You can't even see my arm anymore. Bye-bye. <laughs>